What's going on, everyone? Live streaming, talking about weight loss during the new year. So uh, whatever questions you have about losing weight in the new year, feel free to ask them. I would love to be able to help you out uh, because it's one of those times of year where everyone's thinking about it, right? And uh, unfortunately, the way you're thinking about it, it's probably not going to help you. You know, so that's what I'm trying to do here is to make it so that you can get the results you actually want to get. Right. That would be the goal here. And so um, right off the bat, the big thing I've been saying to a lot of my clients um, and, and people working with me is to take it a little bit slower. You know, th there's no rush uh, in getting the results you want. And most likely you're probably a little bit exhausted and tired out uh, from the holidays, you know, so it's a difficult thing to try and change everything all at once when you're depleted, you know, and a little bit tired. So uh, you know, it, it's hard because we get so impatient. And one of the things that diets have really done to us is this all or nothing thing, you know? And so if you're going to do it, you better do it all the way, hundred percent. But most things in life, like you kind of start up w in a way where you slowly build up your skills, right? Again, you want to learn piano. You don't just commit to eight hours a day, right? From the get go, you know? And so it's the same with your weight loss that you don't just start everything all at once. You take a little bit of time and recover, relax. <laughs> you know, start drinking water, start slow and build up. You know, I just made this video where I was talking about, you know, people overestimate how much weight they can lose in a month and underestimate how much weight they can lose in a year, you know? And well, what's that mean? Well, it means that when you think you're going to lose all the weight in a month, you just do these crazy plans. You know, it's just like you go too far, try to do too much too quick. And what happens is maybe you're able to lose a little bit of weight uh, for a week or two, or a month or two, but then you can't sustain it. You can't keep it up, you know? And so then the next 10 months, you don't do anything because you're shot from the first two months, you know? And so you got to start thinking more strategically. Now it's hard to think strategically with weight loss because we're so conditioned with the diets to think about weight loss as like, well, how can I get the fastest results possible? You know, what can I do to instantly get the results? And so that mindset causes us to do like really extreme stuff. And so the idea of taking it slow and building up our foundation and getting good at being thin and healthy just seems like a foreign idea, you know? And so right now I try and urge people, especially this, the new year time is to, uh, oh, thank you for, for the roses and, and the, the, the nice things you guys are sending me. Um, what, what it's about now is to do it intelligently. And I, and I like that, you know, I used to promote my program as it's uh, intelligent weight loss. You know, because if you really look at how people try and lose weight, it's kind of like uh, completely unintelligent. You know what I mean? To try and change everything all at once is, again, I know it's appealing because we want to get instant results. But if it hasn't worked, you know, the last 50 times you've tried it, it's probably going to work now either. You know, and trying to change everything all at once uh, just doesn't make any sense. You know, so um, what I would suggest is that you take a long term approach to this instead of thinking it as a sprint, think of it as a marathon. You know, and I know even just saying, oh, it's a marathon that bumps some people out, but that's should expose that limiting belief you have that you just want to lose the weight quick, right? Instead, start thinking you want to lose the weight for good. And so I always say that in terms of the literally articulating your goal is that you don't want to lose weight. You want to get to your goal weight and live the rest of your life at that weight on near autopilot. So that's a different goal but it's much more accurate to what you really want to do. And so words you use have a huge impact on the results you're going to get. And so as a hypnotist, the words you use are extremely important because your subconscious mind is extremely literal, right? And so if you're going to get the results you want, you need to use very specific language about what it is you want to accomplish and how you're going to about, go about making that happen. And the words you choose are a huge part of that process. So right off the bat, you want to get to your goal weight and live the rest of your life there on near autopilot. Now we could build on that. We could say to get to my goal weight, I want it to be fun and enjoyable. Well, uh oh, <laughs> what can we say that? Yeah, you can say that your subconscious mind's a servo mechanism. And so it will just go about answering whatever you task it to do. And so you can begin asking the question, how can I return to my goal weight in a fun and enjoyable way? Now, I know you don't have the answer to that. I get that. But once you start asking that question, your mind starts going to work on how you can find that answer. 
And so if you keep thinking about that, you start to get better answers, much better answers than, oh, cut your calories by 60% on day one and just do that. Well, that sounds good <laughs> conceptually, but the reality of that approach is pretty bad. Is it not? <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't work, you know? And so that's always a, a litmus test you should keep in mind is if it's something that you've tried multiple times and it hasn't worked, um, it's probably not going to work this time either, you know, not to, not to be a jerk about it, but it, it's probably not going to work, you know? And so don't be afraid to try something else, to do something different because you just might get better results or at least different results. And that kind of helps you down the path a little bit more. So, um, you know, it, it's just, it's so important how you approach this. So that's why I wanted to do this now, because I know a lot of people, um, here we are day three of the new year and they're already not making it. And I don't blame them because it was, it was a challenging year for this because so much of this depends on the day it happens. Right. And so I know a lot of people have, have conversations already. It's like, oh, well, the first of the year, that's the new one. But that was a Sunday. So it's like, who starts a weight loss program on a Sunday? So it's like, well, I'll start tomorrow. It's like, I'm going to do it Monday. But then Monday is kind of like an observed holiday. So it's like, oh, well. And so then now it's Tuesday. Well, who starts a weight loss program on a Tuesday? <laughs> so it's like, you know, now people are already off track with what they want to do because the days didn't line up perfectly. Right. Because if you don't start a weight loss plan on Monday, did you really start it? <laughs> right. So, um, you know, it, it's important that the way we approach this stuff has a huge impact on the results you're going to get. And so if you've already kind of like wanted to lose weight and it already hasn't worked, um, now is a great chance for you to do it differently. And the way you can do it differently is, yeah, you're going to commit to your weight loss, but you're going to commit to it in a sustainable long term way so that you won't be. You won't be all or nothing with your weight loss. You'll be all or something. And so maybe you intended to lose weight and to kind of go down that path, but you already fell off the diet. In my mind, that's great. I'm glad you fell off the diet because now it opens up the opportunity for you to do something else. And what that something else could be, <laughs> someone says, I need to finish the cookies first. Fair enough. You know what I mean? Like we got to come up with our strategies. You know what I mean? That's okay. You know, that's what I'm, that's the kind of thinking that I think is actually more beneficial for losing weight is to recognize, well, I got a box of cookies that I feel like I need to finish first. Fine, finish them and then get started for real. And what that refers to is subconscious and conscious congruence so that they're, they're aligned. That's what I'm trying to say. When I was talking about the days this, um, this year, there's a lot of pressure to start on January 1st. Um, but then, oh, I'm going to, I want to get that question. Uh, so, so th that's why I was mentioning this year with the days and the way it laid out, because that created a subconscious incongruence. You see, you consciously wanted to lose weight starting in the new year, but subconsciously you only start weight loss plans on Monday. And so that's why I was saying there was an incongruence there because, well, now it's Sunday. No one starts on a Sunday. I'll start tomorrow. Now it's observed. It's kind of a holiday. I'll start tomorrow. Oh no, shit. Now it's Tuesday. <laughs> now I can't start. And so it's the same thing with the cookies. If you got a bunch of cookies, yeah, you better you better off finishing them off first and then get started. Now, of course, that also leads me to the next thing that you don't have to stop eating cookies to lose weight either. And that's a big problem people do. They say, okay, well, now I'm going to start my weight loss goal. No more cookies, no more dessert, no more fun, no more nothing. That's a bad strategy. You know, so again, what I always do with people in my program is we have kind of about five days a week, which is really focused on clean eating, you know, as clean as you can make it or want to make it to start. And then you have two days where you get more variety and you can make food choices based more on the enjoyment of it. Okay. So having that variety, I find to be really important. Now I know people talk about like a cheat meal. Um, for me personally, a cheat meal is not going to do it. It's not going to cut it. I need more than a cheat meal. And I don't like the word cheat anyways. Um, I usually refer to it as like kind of foot off the gas days, um, planned imperfection. That's more what I'm, I'm interested in. And so, but that speaks to a bigger point that again, this all or nothing mentality, you don't have to be all or nothing. You can lose weight and still eat cookies. Gasp. Can you, can you believe it? <laughs> now you got to eat the cookies differently. You got to eat less of them, but you can actually do this. All right. And so it's that sort of thinking about being more creative of being more flexible in your thinking that's usually going to get you a lot better results. All right. Um, so someone says, hello, I was wondering what your professional background is. Love your TikToks. So I love this question because my background is actually in, I got a degree in finance and investments. And at the same time I was getting that degree, a couple months before that, 
I, so I was in a tough spot. I, I was 50 pounds heavier than I am. I was binge drinking. I was just eating out of control and emotionally. I was just a wreck. I was in a bad, bad spot. And I took a semester off from school and it was during that time. And this is just a miracle for me. And I consider it a miracle. I was exposed to hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, yoga, and played guitar and martial arts. And all of these things happened at the same time and really allowed me to figure out how to truly transform my life in a real dramatic way. And a big part of that at that time, especially was the neurolinguistic programming or the NLP, because that's the science of modeling. And so what I did is I, that, that idea is that you find someone who's getting the results that you want and you find out what they did and then do it, you know? And so I would find people that had lost weight and kept it off. And I interviewed them and I read a lot of them. At this point, I've interviewed hundreds of them, but I began speaking with them and I very quickly found that they were doing things differently than I was doing. And there's different than the people that were overweight. They were telling me how to lose weight. And I started to realize it was a big mindset game. You know what I mean? Like that was the secret. And so that was the beginning of a genuine transformation where it wasn't just losing weight. It was really me transforming into the person who I wanted to be, which gets to a deeper point that I think if you're really going to master your weight, if you're really going to get a hold on your weight and your health, you need to wrap your weight loss and personal development, you know, because it's got to be more than just how you look. It's really when you can tap into more motivation, it makes the whole process easier. Now, the good news is that your weight in your lifestyle are directly impacting everything that's important to you in your life. And so if you really want to get better results with your weight and your health, right off the bat, you need to reframe this process. And a simple way to do that, again, this is something, this is the very first thing I work on my clients is the motivation um, blueprint that they fill out because most people have no idea how to motivate themselves, you know? And so the only motivation they know is the pain-based motivation of stepping on the scale, seeing themselves in a picture, catching a reflection of themselves, the clothes don't fit. And they're so upset and they're in so much pain. They say, I don't care what I got to do. I got to lose some weight. And then they choose some, you know, unsustainable plan because they're real emotional. So real genuine motivation is something that you can trigger within yourself from a calm place. <laughs> it's not just this, this anger, or this upset or this depression of how you look. It's from a place where you can sustain it, you know? So how do you know what that feels? Well, if you're a parent, your motivation to be a parent and take care of your kids is like that, right? You don't have to be in an emotional state to do it. It's part of your core, right? If work is probably important to you, even if you're a little sick or feeling tired that day, you still go to work. Well, why? Because your motivation to work is strong. It's based on more than just emotion. There are reasons that are important down to the core of who you are that cause you to go to work. You know, So that's what I'm trying to say. What we want to do is start with the things in your life that are most important to you. And then what you want to do is you want to see how your weight and your lifestyle are directly impacting those and negatively now, perhaps, and positively in the future when you take control of it. And so even being a parent, right? So it's like, if you start looking at if parent, being a parent's the most important thing to you, your weight is directly negatively impacting that if you're not happy with it. And there's nothing to do with how you look. It has to do with how you feel, how you're living. And so if you're overweight and you're eating like crap and you don't feel well, that's negatively affecting your ability to be the parent you want to be, you see? And so if you start looking at your, um, your weight loss journey, more as becoming the best parent you want to be, you're going to tap into a lot more motivation that way than just saying, oh, I want to wear, you know, bathing suit this year at the beach. You know, that's a fine goal, but it's just, it doesn't have the, the horsepower to get you to where you want to go. All right. So it's really important that right from the beginning, you need to motivate yourself properly, you know, because the, the truth is right now, you're not even, most likely you're not even motivated to lose weight. You know, again, I, I don't say this to be a jerk, but um, most people I, I speak with aren't really motivated to lose weight. They really wish they would lose weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the wish is is a strong 10, um, but the actual motivation to really want to do it is usually like a two, three, you know? So you need to recognize that as your first challenge is to get yourself truly genuinely motivated. And when you do that, the entire process changes afterwards. It becomes a completely different process. And now you're on the road to actually potentially get some better results, you know, but just doing that alone is going to change the process for you because what the diet industry has conditioned us to think hypnotized, if you will, is they have hypnotized us to think about the weight loss process as being one 
where we're going to look better, you know? And so every weight loss ad is always showing you the before and after picture. And so in your mind, wanting to lose weight is really about wanting to look better. And that's not enough, unfortunately, you know, um, that's called an extrinsic motivator and it's not enough motivation. It's the weakest form of motivation. So if you really want to get yourself motivated at a deep level to lose weight and get the results you want, the first thing you need to do is increase your motivation, you know, so that you can truly, truly want to make this happen. And once you do that, again, the whole process changes ahead of you, you know, before you. Um, that's one of the key things. But you can't just assume that you really want to lose weight because you do not. You weigh what you want. You, you don't really want to lose weight. You really wish you'd lose weight you know, um, but you don't really want to do it that bad. And so I give you the example. Uh, it's a thought experiment. It's an unpleasant one, but it proves the point. But think about how much you want to lose weight right now. Scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most, All right? We'll level you at. Okay. And now imagine that, uh, the person you love the most in the entire world was kidnapped and the kidnapper said, I'm not going to give them back to you. And you'll never see them again, unless you lose weight this month. Right now, what's your motivation to lose weight? Right. And even the kidnappers, I want to fill your house with all your favorite foods. Would you struggle or would you just, you'd make it happen, right? Because you're truly motivated because you really want to, you see? Now, again, that's an unpleasant example. I understand that. But I just use it to prove a point that until your motivation is up at an eight, nine, 10, don't even try and lose weight because it's just, you're just not going to do it. You know what I mean? You've got to be really, it'd be like going, it's like someone forces you to go to college or something, right? If you don't really want to do that, well, you're going to be in trouble because it's a lot of hard work. Right. So it's like, if you're going to go to college and you're going to succeed with it. You got to want to do it. You really got to want to do it. And if you don't, if you're being forced to do it, you know, again, your results are probably going to be a lot less than they would be if you were truly genuinely motivated to do it. And so same is true with your weight. And so you can't just assume, oh, I really, just because you wish you were thinner doesn't mean you want to lose weight. You've got to recognize that. And it's important because once you recognize, oh, just shit, I really don't want to lose weight that bad. I don't really care. I've gotten kind of used to it. And it's just easier to keep this going. You know, once you recognize that now you can deal with that level and get that fixed up. Right. Because then once you truly do want to, that fixes a lot of the stuff. Right. So again, that kidnapper example, if that happened, you know, how much weight, how many diets do you need to learn about to succeed? None, because the problem is not that you don't know what to eat. The problem is you can't get yourself to do it. And the primary reason why you can't get yourself to do it is because you don't want to do it. You don't want to lose weight. You don't value it. And you don't value it because you basically think about losing weight as looking better. And that's not really that appealing to you. Right. And so on top of that, um, that's what I'm saying. I'm spot on. Wow. And I've struggled with this for years. Yeah, I know. Again, this is what I do. I always say like, I'm not here to really so much teach you new stuff as much as I am to point out things that are right in front of you that you can't see. Cause you're not used to you're the way we see things and think about things is very conditioned into us, you know? So I try and point these things out. So you think about, Oh, I want to look better, but that is a very weak motivation. You don't, let me put it this way, right? So your brain has evolved over millions of years, right? During those millions of years, how you looked in your weight and what size clothes you wore meant absolutely nothing. Okay. Absolutely nothing. You have no brain structures in your brain dedicated to helping you lose weight. It was never an issue in all of history. It was the opposite problem. Right. The real problem was you needed to gain weight. You needed to have enough calories so that you could live. So you've got all these brain structures that are pushing you to eat. All right. And you have no brain structures that are there to help you lose weight. And you have no brain structures dedicated to how you look because that didn't matter. There weren't even mirrors. <laughs> I mean, until relatively recently, there was no opportunity to be overweight because there wasn't enough food. You see, so we've got these old brains in this new environment and you need to update that if you want to get the results you want, because I know you're frustrated because I know you feel like you want to lose weight really bad, but you can't get the motivation to meet, meet that. And there's a reason why, because there's no part of your brain motivated to lose weight. It's the opposite, you know? So what you have to do is you have to weave your, um, is this thing really going to go? Oh, I can see. Hold on one second. Um, I had a weird thing on my computer. I'm trying to fix it this time. All right. So um, so what you have to do is you have to take what's already important to you naturally with your brain, survival, um, relationships, 
you know, uh, shelter, <laughs> you know what I mean? Having things in your life. You got to take the things that are already important to you in your life and you've got to weave your weight and your health around those. That's pretty much the only opportunity you have, the only chance you have of really getting this area of your life fixed. You know, otherwise you're just going to keep on doing the same thing. And it's primarily because your motivation is not rising to the level it needs to for what you need to do here. Right. So someone says, um, I've been on a diet for 30 years now. I'm just tired of dieting. Yeah. I don't blame you. The dieting, listen to this, the diets, the food companies and the diets have got us twisted up. It, it's, it's literally, it's literally hypnosis. I always say this, but when I became a hypnotist, I thought I was going to hypnotize people to lose weight. Turns out I hypnotize people to, I have to de-hypnotize people to lose weight because you're hypnotized by the food companies and the diets. And they're the same thing, by the way. Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz. Uh, Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. Uh, Atkins Food is owned by Cinnabon and the company that owns Cinnabon pretzels or Annie's pretzels and Cinnabon. These companies don't want you to lose weight. They want you to restrict your calories for a little while because they know that if you do that, you're going to come back to eating more calories very soon. Okay. So the dieting mindset, they've hypnotized with all these limiting suggestions and dieting does a bunch of them. It focuses you on just looking better. That's not enough. It causes you to think just short term. How can I get the fastest result possible? It causes you on all or nothing th thinking, which is not going to get you the results you want. Um, it gets you taking drastic results way too fast. You know, a lot of people the last couple of days have restricted their calories by 50%, 60% day one. Think they're going to maintain that 60% reduction until they get to their goal weight. You're not. It's too much too soon. And so you're not going to get the results. But the worst part of all of it is that you're going to take it upon yourself as if it's your fault, like there's something wrong with you. And that's probably the biggest hypnotic suggestion that the diets have put into us more than anything, that if you can't lose weight, because if you think about losing weight, what you really think about is how can I diet to lose weight? Dieting is the only strategy you have probably, okay? And so when the diets don't work, the subconscious belief you start creating is that there's something wrong with me. Look at all these people that got all these results. How come I'm not getting? There must be something wrong with me. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. It's the strategy. The strategy sucks. Statistically, 39% of people can't get past a week of dieting. 75% can't get past a month. And 95% of people ultimately fail to lose weight and keep it off with diets. So with numbers that bad, it's not you, it's the diet. Okay, you got to recognize that. And so what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is that you need to, Right off the bat, you need to have a mindset approach to losing weight, right? You need to change your mindset if you ever have any chance of losing weight. Then on top of that, you need to change your lifestyle because if you're living an unhealthy lifestyle, which you probably are, um, it is going to make it really hard for you to eat well. And then you have to change your eating, obviously, because ultimately it's the calorie consumption that has the biggest impact on your weight, right? Um, so again, when I work with people, yeah, there's the calorie deficit. You got to create a calorie deficit, right? But you're only going to create that and maintain it, I believe, if you create a lifestyle that supports that. And then you're, you're only going to do those two things if you have a mindset that's, that's solid and supports those things, okay? So these are the factors. You, there needs to be more to it. Just getting an eating plan is an almost, would it work for you? If it hasn't worked for you yet, it's never going to work because you're not the personality that can just be given a meal plan and then just follow it. The problem is not that you don't know what to eat. The problem is that you can't get yourself to do it. It's a mindset problem and a lifestyle problem primarily, okay? And so once you recognize that, you're going to work on fixing it. But trying to do the same thing and just thinking, oh, maybe Weight Watchers will work for me this time. Maybe this diet will work for me this time. Well, it hasn't worked the last 30 times. It's probably not going to work again, okay? So it's really important that you start to see this for what it is and you start to adjust appropriately. And, and make the right corrections, all right? And so getting off a diet would be a great a great option for you. And so one of the ways to get off of a diet, though, is to start recognizing that you don't want to lose weight. You want to master your weight. Give yourself some time. Recognize that you're done with the days of imagining someone's going to give you some magical meal plan that's perfectly fit for you. They never met you. They don't know you. They don't know your lifestyle. And you're just going to follow some plan. No, you're going to create your own plan. It's going to take some trial and error. You're going to have to figure it out. But once you have that plan, it's going to work because it's custom made for you. Okay. So that's the way you start getting out of dieting is again, by changing your mindset, how you think about this whole process and start giving yourself more time. Again, people overestimate how much weight they can lose in a, in a month and underestimate how much weight they can lose in a year. Instead of trying to lose all the weight at once, 
in January, set yourself up for success so that the entire year you're consistently dropping weight in a comfortable and enjoyable way. So that next year at this time, when it's going to be a 2024, you now have not only dropped the weight, but you have done it in a way that's sustainable, enjoyable, and easy to maintain. That's the secret. All right. That's how you get out of it. What if being social is important to you and you have daily encounters occurring around alcohol and food? Yeah. So that's a unique challenge for you. Okay. So how do you deal with that? Because everyone's got their own challenges. And so again, what a lot of times the dieting is, it's like, oh, I'm just not going to go to those situations or I'm going to go in those situations and I'm not going to eat the food. Okay. But what you really have to do is you have to start articulating. What if being social is important to you and you have been in daily encounters around alcohol and food? So what you need to do is recognize that those encounters are happening and what typically goes on, an easy way to think about this is to think you go into eating trances. So when you get into those social situations, all of a sudden you turn into a version of yourself that starts to drink too much and eat too much, okay? And because that's what you've done, that's what you tend to do. And so the first step becomes, how do I want to behave in these situations? I know that sounds silly because you have the dieting mindset that says, well, I don't want to drink or eat. All, all or nothing, right? But we want to get to a deeper level. Like, how do you really want to act and feel in those situations? And I know you haven't asked this question. So first you come up with that answer, right? And so hopefully it's like, well, I'd like to stay in control. I'd like to feel calm and relaxed. And maybe you don't want to drink at all. Maybe. But maybe you want to drink a little bit moderately, okay? So there's no right or wrong. There's only what works for you. So you got to get specific on what you think the right solution would be in that situation. And so you might say, I'd like to have one drink and eat one bite of food or one plate of food. Again, I'm making up, I don't know the details, but you start articulating the ideal way you would like to act. And so then you start strategizing to make that happen. And so I'll leave the alcohol alone for a second because that's a little bit of a different conversation. But let's say you go into these situations and you tend to overeat. Well, then we start looking, well, why do you overeat? Well, part of it is because you're probably too hungry going into the situation. So maybe before you go into the situation, you have a healthy, nourishing snack. You drink a big glass of water. You relax yourself and calm down. And maybe that helps you eat more moderately in those situations, you see? But it starts by articulating how you want to act, then going into the situations and practicing the strategies that you've worked up. And then here's the key part. <laughs> After that, you reflect on the strategy and you say, what worked? What didn't work? How can I make it better next time? Do you see what I mean? It's a process of optimization, which no one thinks about with weight loss because weight loss is always all or nothing. Okay, I've started my diet, so I'm going to go into that social situation. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to eat. Oh, shit, blew it. Oh, well, next year. <laughs> you know, that's completely the wrong way. You need to go in this situation with some new strategies and plans, test them out. Did it work? Did it not work? And what did you learn from it? And again, that's why in my program, it's all built around the program itself then technique, which is really two techniques, the redo technique, the rehearsal technique. The redo technique allows you to learn from the mistakes you make, because guess what? You're going to make lots of mistakes. And the natural way we learn, evolve and grow as humans is we learn from our mistakes. Now, when it comes to diet, there's no learning going on. There's just follow it, follow it or don't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, there's no learn, no room for learning. And it's like, you would never approach anything else like this. Like, imagine you want to play the piano and I'm the piano teacher. I say, okay, here, play it. Mm -hmm. You made a mistake. Get out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you'd never do that because that's counter to learning in ed education, but you're not taught to learn when, when you do a diet. And that's part of their bullshit is they don't want you to lose weight. They don't want you to lose weight. They want you to restrict your calories for a little while um, and then feel like a failure and then go back to overeating and eating all the calories. Okay. And never you any different through the process. Okay. So what you got to do is you, again, you have to start slow. I know you don't want to hear that because again, dieting mentalities, I just want quick results. If I'm not getting quick results, I don't want any results. <laughs> I'm only in it for the quickness, you know, but you got to commit to it long term, what are the results you want. And then when you have those specific examples of challenging situations, you keep on working and improving on them. And it ain't rocket science. You know what I mean? I, you're smarter than I am, I bet. And so it's like, if you just go into it with this approach, you figure out different strategies each time. And now, you know, the first time you go into it with a new strategy, it eh, kind of worked, kind of didn't. But say you do it 10 more times. Well, 10 times after going through that process of optimizing and making it better and better, you're in a totally different spot. And now you're like, okay, oh yeah, when I go into situ so social situations, I do this and this and this. I walk in there, I'm feeling fine. I socialize more. I don't even care about the food. I don't even drink anymore. I just drink a glass of sparkling water and I got that licked. On to the next thing. <laughs> and that's my approach, you know what I mean? To weight mastery, 
not weight loss, because weight loss is just about how fast can you lose the weight? And you do not want to lose weight. You want to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life. You've got to make that distinction. They're, they're two totally different things. Okay. Um, someone says, I have a question. I have gastroparesis and struggle with food in general. I can't digest fiber. All right. Um, yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah, for sure. Because fiber is really one of the secret weapons of losing weight. It really is because it's one of the most lacking nutrients out of the standard American diet. And, um, it really is one of those things that makes you feel more satisfied and full. And so, um, I don't really give any nutritional information cause I'm, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist. And so I'm more in the ballpark of what you can do specifically to deal with whatever challenges you have. So my suggestion would be the struggles with food in general. Um, you know, again, that's such a vague term. And so I'd want to drill down into the specifics of it. And I would start by picking what's the biggest food struggle you have. Okay. So that's always what I do in my programs. It's always about like even habits. We start by focusing on the worst habit. And when I say worst habit, the habit that's most responsible for keeping the extra weight on your body. Okay. And so we start with that. See, now what's the diet do? You're supposed to change everything all at once. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, how like in depth eating is like, like, you know what I mean? Like your weight, the diet's got us thinking that, that weight loss is like a bank account, like debits and credits. Right. But the weight loss is like the stock market. Do you know what I mean? Like with all these factors impacting each other. And so we need to have a holistic approach and viewpoint of this, you know, get the results. So what I would suggest is you tackle kind of one thing at a time. So again, if you get more specific about the specific food challenges you have, you know, I might be able to give you some more specific um, solutions and ideas. Um, what do you think about prescriptions for weight loss? I don't love them, you know, but here's the thing, right? So as a hypnotist, I always say that I'm the solution to last resort, right? No one starts their weight loss journey with a hypnotist. Um, you end up at the hypnotist when nothing else has worked. And so medications I feel should be viewed the same way that if you really have tried everything and nothing works, then I think, you know, the medications, medications have a place, but I think it's easy to just, now, again, if all you know is dieting, then the medicines are even more appealing, but Again, what I do is I say, okay, let's master your weight. And so it's a three-step process. There's three pillars to mastering your weight. There's the mindset piece, the lifestyle piece, and then the eating piece. And when you get all three of those pieces working, you know, for six months to a year, well, let's see what the results are. And then you can start considering the weight, the, the, the prescriptions, you know, because before that, you're never going to know what was the mindset, what was the lifestyle, what was the eating part. And what was the actual physical part that the medicine could have helped, you know? And so I feel the exact same way with menopause, how much fits the menopause and how much is the lifestyle, you know? And so you won't know until you really clean up your lifestyle and see. So I think it's helpful to have that attitude. And, and that's, so that's what I generally suggest, but I don't mind medications. I think medications have a place for sure, but I think people use them too quickly, you know, cause it just seems like it's easy. Um, are you for hire? And if so, how do we get information? <clears throat> Um, I'm not, I don't really, I, I don't do private sessions right now in many places for it. Um, it, it's, a, it's a lot of money to be honest. Anyways, what I would suggest if you're interested in learning what I'm talking about here, and I, I hope you are, if you want to lose weight, um, is go into my bio or, or in the description and there is a link to go watch the training I put together. It's the three steps to master your weight. And so go watch that. Now, the way that I work now is I create barriers for someone to work with me or even get my program. So you can't just go to a web page and buy my program because people with weight loss get very spontaneously emotion. Like I said, right? You step on the scale, see the picture of yourself, see your reflection. You get so upset. I got to do something. And so it's like, that is the last person in the world that I want to get. Just someone who spontaneously gets real upset and wants to do this because th that motivation doesn't last. And so to get even into my program, you've got to watch a half hour training first. <laughs> you've got to go to the description. You got to click the link. Then you got to put your name and your email address in there. And then you got to push the play button. I find like that's the biggest barrier out of all of them is that people put their information in and then the video is right there, right? So as soon as you put your name and email address and push the button right there, the video is, you just got to push the play button and less than 50% of the people do that, you know? And so again, that's why I set it up this way. Cause I, when I work with people, so it's like, I have a program, but I, I work with you, you know, there's coaching involved with it. And so, um, if, if I'm going to work with you, you need to be committed. You know what I mean? Like you got to really be serious about this. And just to be honest, don't get upset with me here, but you, you're probably not, you're probably not that committed or serious about losing weight. Again, you got to recognize you really wish you would lose weight you know, magically, but you probably don't really want to do the things that make you lose weight. It's probably not that important to you. 
you know? And so again, I put these barriers up just to kind of separate people that are really serious and people that aren't. And again, some people, you know, it depends where you're at in life. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, who's to say a month from now you might be serious. Okay. But again, no one's getting to my program unless you are genuinely serious because you're not going to get results unless you're really serious. You know, my program takes a lot of effort. It's an investment of time, energy, and money, you know? And so, um, but yeah, but if you're interested, let's do it. You know, we, uh, we have calls every Tuesday and Thursday. We just did one. And so, um, I can tell you pretty confidently that I think I'm your best chance of, of ever getting control of your weight. I, I genuinely believe that. And so that's why, you know, this is, I'm so excited because I've been really doing a lot of private coaching in the last really like five, 10 years. Um, I've always had a program too, but I just redid the program and I've implemented some coaching with it as well. So this is without question, the best version of my program. Um, but the way I've set things up is it freed, it's freed up a lot of my time so I can do a lot of free stuff because my mission in life is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight, because, um, this is life or death to me folks. Like this really, again, I want you to look good. Sure. But you know, this all started for me when my father died of a heart attack at 54, you know, so I was nine years old. It was the most traumatic thing that's happened to me. And it was just the worst for a million reasons. Um, but to me, like weight's always been more than just looking good, you know? So again, I, I want to be able to help everyone. And so I kind of have a Robin hood model where, you know, the people that can invest and are ready to do that invest with me. And then I I'm able to just give lots of stuff away to other people, you know what I mean? For, for free. And so I'm here to help you out regardless. And so again, even if you do go click on that link and sign up, get on my email list because I send out, I, I do lots of stuff to just help you out. Okay. So regardless, I'm going to help you. Um, Someone says portion control might work. Now again, portion control, yeah, it might work, but understand this, right? The dieting hypnosis that they put on us, another aspect of that dieting hypnosis is that all these diets are just giving you tactics, right? So here's a way to see through the diets to, to prevent yourself from falling into the trap anymore. The diets may seem different. Right. So, so some, oh, you're going to count points on this one. This one here, you're only going to eat protein. This one here, you know, you're only going to eat carbs. You're not going to eat fat. The specifics are always a little different. Right. But what's always the same with the diets, and this is, should be the litmus test you start looking at them as, is that every diet's the same in the sense that they just tell you what to do. And you're supposed to magically be able to just get yourself to do it. And that's the big lie of the diets, the number one big lie. And it's the big lie that people believe you know? And so you keep thinking, right? I was just joking. I was talking about this earlier. I'm like, imagine my pocket here. Imagine my, I got, I got this, this piece of paper and on this piece of paper, I've got folded up. I've got the most amazing diet plan you've ever seen in your life. This diet plan, I guarantee you will lose 10 pounds a week. If you follow it, you want that diet plan. You want that meal plan. You do, right? But what if I give it to you and it says, eat carrots and drink water. Oh, damn. <laughs> what would you think it was going to be? You know what I mean? Like there is no magic plan out there. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, like you have to stop that. You have to give that up. Um, I always joke around that it's like, it's like someone who wants to learn piano, but the only way that they will, the, the only, the only things they'll use to learn are like the learn piano in three days, learn piano in an hour, learn piano in one week, right? That's the only things they'll look to learn piano. Well, that person's just going to perpetually be going through those programs and 30 years from now, they're not still not going to play the piano right? But that's what the diet is. It's like, it's basically, it's just, it's shortcuts. You're looking for gimmicks and shortcuts and you put so much energy and money and time into shortcuts that you never just focused on dealing with the problem at the core, you know? And so, um, you know, that's what you got to do. And so if any weight loss plan you're going to follow, if it's basically just telling you what to do and think about this diets and workouts, right? That's what they are. Here's what to do. See you later. And then you can't do it. And then you feel bad about yourself. Well, it's because no one, and I'm going to prove this to you right now. You have no idea how to get yourself to do it. So the enlightened people say, well, you know what? I don't need a diet. I need a lifestyle. I need to change my lifestyle. And you know what? I need some mindset. I need to change my mindset too. <laughs> but those, what, what do you need to change about your lifestyle? So my lifestyle plan, it's eight, it's eight habits. Okay. It's sleep, hydration, relaxation, breathing, nourishment, movement, meditation, gratitude. You implement those eight things in your life. You become a different person. Okay. Now I know I tell you those and you say, Oh my God, that sounds like a lot. It's overwhelming. Yeah, I get that. I'm about practical practical. So what the very first thing I do is I show you a five minute routine. It could be three minutes if you wanted to, and you could do six of those habits every single day right? So you start stacking that together for a couple months, you start transforming the way you think and feel 
But let's get to the mindset piece, right? Let's just say you're you're enlightened enough to say, well, you know what? I got to work on my mindset. What? What specifically do you need to change about your mindset? How I think? Huh? <laughs> and again, I'm not, I'm not busting your chops here. I'm just pointing out that you're woefully underprepared. You are, you know what I mean? Like you got a cannon wound. <laughs> You've been shot with a bazooka and you're trying to fix the wound with a Band-Aid. That's what I'm trying to say. The diet is like a Band-Aid. What you know about weight loss is like a Band-Aid and you've got a gaping wound. And so you're woefully unprepared. So what do I mean when I say mindset, right? So when you, with my program, the very first thing you do after you learn that the program is self and technique is you start on the blueprints, your custom roadmaps, your blueprints to losing weight and keeping it off for the rest of your life. And so the very first thing we do is the mindset piece because without the mindset, nothing else matters. So we do mindset, then lifestyle, and then the eating. And everyone wants to start with the eating, right? But it's pointless to do that if you don't have the other two. So when I say mindset, I mean six things specifically, okay? So specifically mindset, we start with motivation. You don't have any idea how to motivate yourself. You, the only motivation you know with weight loss is pain-based motivation that happens when you step on the scale, see yourself in a picture, clothes don't fit, see a reflection of yourself. And then you get triggered and upset and then I got to do this. I got to lose the weight. That's it, right? And that pain-based motivation doesn't work well because your brain's a pleasure-seeking mechanism. And even if you're able to force yourself to do it and you start getting results, then the pain starts going down and then your motivation goes down, right? And that's what you've experienced. And so again, I take people through what I call a motivation matrix, which is how to use pain pleasure, how to use intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, which is the scientific understanding of motivation. You have none of that right now. You can't get yourself motivated at will, right? And that's why New Year's is such a funny one to me because typically when people get motivated to lose weight, it's a spontaneous thing. It's triggered by those, those pain-based experiences, the, the scale, the picture, the reflection. And so New Year's is just a funny one to me because it really just highlights the fact that you have no idea how to motivate yourself. And you try to get yourself motivated by the new year, right? You say, okay, new year, new me, I'm going to do it. This is it, right? And you try, you want to, but you literally have no idea how to motivate yourself. And it all comes out in the wash at New Year's because again, you, you feel like it should be a new year and you should be more motivated than you are, but you're just not, you know? And that's the, the situation you find yourself in. So again, the very first thing I do is I take people through the motivation blueprint because even after you fill that out, your motivation, it comes and goes because you're not used to thinking that way. So you have to go back and remind yourself of what motivates you. But that right off the bat is a game changer. But there's five more aspects to mindset. Feel free to write these down, you know, because at least now you'll have a real concept of, of what you should be focusing on. The next thing is your self-image, your identity. That's a cornerstone of your weight. I think it's the most important actual piece of losing weight. You know, like, doesn't it feel like sometimes like there's some part of you, people call it like a weight set point. Right. And so it feels like you think of it as a physical thing. You feel like hormonally, genetically, I'm predisposed to be a certain weight. Right. But that's bullshit. It is mostly psychological. And what I mean by that is that you, if you've been overweight for 10 years, 20 years, you identify in your self image as that of an overweight person. You have learned how to be in the world as an overweight person, how to relate to people, how to say, make self deprecating remarks to protect yourself. And so you are. A, it's like you're fluent in English, right? You're fluent in being an overweight person and, and that's your self-image. And so you've got to change that. I can't tell you the number of conversations I've had with people that have lost the weight that they wanted to lose and then they put it back on. And so I said, well, what happened? And when I always get to the core of it, it's people will say, I didn't feel like myself. So you have to understand that just losing the weight is not curative. It doesn't just fix everything. And there's a good chance that you will lose the weight and put it back on because you never really believe yourself to be a thin, healthy person. So that's why, right, once we get past the motivation, you really want to do this. The very first thing we do to get to work on is starting to see yourself and think of yourself as a different person. You need to identify as a thin, healthy person or a lean. Some people hate the word thin. Well, don't use it. Use lean, use slim, use healthy, whatever words you want. But you need to think of yourself as a different person. You have to, or else you're not going to maintain your results. And so then we go motivation, self-image, and then we go to habits. You don't know what your habits even are. You know your bad habits, maybe, and you try and stop them with your willpower. And it lasts for a little bit, if that, and then you can't maintain it. And it's because you don't understand what habits are. So again, that, that's another whole section we do. We identify your habits. We break them down so you can understand what the hell is going on. 
<laughs> you know, because because again, it's just like there's a very specific structure to your habits. And once you understand that, it's still work to change them, but you can be much more strategic and intelligent about how you're going about doing it. All right. And so then we get to the emotions and this. I mean, all these things are important. So this one's really important too, because do you struggle with emotional eating? Do you? Is that a problem? I bet it is. And so you think, well, I got to stop emotional eating. What you don't realize is that emotional eating is your number one and probably only strategy to manage your emotions. And when I say manage emotions, I mean two things. I mean to feel the positive emotions you want to feel. Eating is probably the main way you do that. I work hard all day and I relax entertain myself. I rewarded for a hard work with the food. Okay. And that's the only way you have to do it. It feels that good. And the second thing is how do you deal with negative, unpleasant emotions? You have no genuine strategies probably and using the food to distract yourself from or feel a little blip of pleasure for a little while is the main thing you use to deal with those. Okay. So learning how to influence your emotions in a genuine way is a huge process and part of mastering your weight. Because as soon as you can feel all the emotions you want and deal with the unpleasant emotions you don't want without food, that instantly makes it way easier to master your weight. Okay. But you have no idea how to do that. <laughs> the next thing goes to thinking, right? So I said thinking, but let's break that down. How do you think like a thin person? Would you know about mindsets? Do you know about growth and fixed mindset? Do you know about solution and problem oriented thinking? Do you know about your internal dialogue, your inner hypnotist? You are talking to yourself 24 hours a day literally hypnotizing yourself into doing what you're doing to thinking, feeling, and acting the way you act, right? Do you know about transformational grammar? Do you know about powerful and weak language? You know, so these are just some of the things, you know, that I bring my clients through. So it's like, again, I'm not saying this to, to make you feel like you don't have to get my program, but I'm just trying to point out that you have not learned anything about, you know, as little about how to lose weight now as you did right before you started your first diet. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The diets are not getting anywhere near fixing the problem for you. So you have to recognize this so you stop relying on them and thinking they're going to fix it. They're not. And the final piece of the mindset piece is maintenance. How do you maintain this? And you need your maintenance right from day one. Think about this. The main thing that stops you from losing weight is you can't maintain yourself. Oh, oh two days in, you need to know how to maintain. <laughs> It's not maintenance isn't for when you get to the goal weight and that's it. You need to learn how to maintain so you can do day, day two, uh, week two, month two, <laughs> right? You have no idea how to maintain. You're very superstitious with your weight loss, right? You just hope you'll magically be inspired and then all of a sudden stick to some plan. It's such a half-assed, it's not even a half-assed, <laughs> it's an eighth-assed plan and it's not your fault. I'm not blaming you. So don't make, I don't want you to take it that way. It's the diets. They have they have hypnotized us to think about weight loss in a completely messed up way, a completely inadequate way, you know? And so I am not a genius. I promise you that. I'm just a guy who lucked out with learning these things at a certain time and I was able to implement them. And it was so powerful to me because again, my father died when he was 54 of a heart attack. So weight to me was life and death. And so this was such a transformative experience for me that I literally, I got a degree in finance and investments, you know, and it's like, I literally stepped away from that. I got certified in hypnosis, yoga, NLP as a strategic coach, Reiki, and all these different certifications and stuff. And then I started working on this with people. And that's where I think I'm unique because I think I fill a unique void within the weight loss world. And it, to me, it's the most important one, right? So this is why I feel like I'm more important than a nutritionist, a dietitian, a doctor is because they're going to tell you what to do, but no one shows you how to get yourself to do it consistently. And that is the number one problem you're having, you know? And so I'm on the ground working with people, helping them to actually practically, I, I was just doing a call just now before I got on this. And what's the person's habit that they want to change? Well, I keep eating at night and I don't know how to change it. She knows she shouldn't eat at night. <laughs> she doesn't need a diet to tell her that. She doesn't need a dietitian to say, oh, you should stop eating at night. You're consuming too many calories. She knows that. She's a very smart person <laughs> and very successful. The problem is as successful as she is in her professional life, she does not know how to get herself to not eat at night. And who's she going to go help her? Who's going to help her? If I wasn't around, who's she going to talk to? Who's going to help her with that? Oh, you just need to, you just need to do it. <laughs> what? How do you get yourself to do it? 
this is the magician's trick, right? Magicians, magic works through misdirection, okay? And the diets are using this misdirection to keep pointing you at the meal plan. And they keep convincing you that you're one meal plan away from mastering your weight. You're one magic Monday when you just magically get motivated enough to just, what, all of a sudden be really strict with your eating and completely live and think and act differently? It's it's so ridiculous. But I know you don't think of it this way because you're hypnotized. Literally, hypnosis is bypassing the critical faculty. And I can't think of a better example of hypnosis and bypassing the critical faculty and not thinking um, critically than dieting. It's like, how many more times can you try and diet and it not work and you keep going back to it? You know what I mean? And you don't even realize that they're not showing you the number one thing you need to know. So what if this magic diet came out tomorrow? What is it? What is it? What meal plan do you think it could possibly be? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, what could it be? It has nothing to do. Every single diet works if you follow it. But the problem is you can't follow any diet practically. So so that's the problem, you know? So, so that's what I try to say to you guys. Um, going out is my only way to be with people. Yeah, we'll be with people. You know, figure out and practice and learn how to eat differently when you go out. Because oh, I could never do that. Yes, you can. You haven't tried. I know for a fact you have not consistently said to yourself, how can I go out and eat better? I know this because I used to drink way too much when I went out. I literally, every time I go out, I say, I'm not going to drink too much tonight. Guess what? I drink too much. And so, well, what happened? I really didn't want to drink. I really didn't. I said that to myself anyways, and I really believed it. So what happened? Well, I had to really break it down. It took me many times of doing it and reflecting back on what was going on. Well, what I figured out is that a big part of it was I was already anticipating. I don't want to drink, but I'm anticipating I'm going to drink anyways, though. That's what you're doing with food. Want to lose weight, but I don't think I'm really going to do it. So right off the bat, your programming is that of over drinking. Well, mine was over drinking. Yours is overeating. And so the next thing is that I recognized one of the strategic things is every time I was drinking, I was taking huge gulps. So I had to take smaller sips. And I said, if I order a glass of water at the same time, because I'm drinking a lot, because I'm kind of uncomfortable, I'm socially anxious. And so I'm using the alcohol in the, in the movement of just drinking to deal with some of that anxiety. So now I got a glass of water. So I'm still, I get the same, same behavior, but now I'm putting water in my body instead of beer. And then when I drink the beer, I'm taking smaller sips and I had to program and reinforce these in. So again, if you consistently focus on one behavior and getting better at it, you can improve it. The problem is you're not doing that. You're saying, I, I don't think I can do it first of all. Oh, thanks for the gift. I appreciate the rose. Um, and so you, you're, you're just saying, okay, well now I'm going to go out and I'm not going to do it. And then you do it and you say, oh, it didn't work. You know? And so again, it's, it, it's just all or nothing. It's real quick. Um, someone says I, I live alone and don't have any support. Yeah, that's hard. Definitely. Um, not having support, but on the flip side, you also don't have anyone throwing you off track, you know? So everyone's got their challenges and their supporting, um, aspects of this process, but you got to, again, identify your weaknesses, acknowledge them, and then go to work on resolving them. If you live alone and you don't have support, again, that's a whole part in, in my, um, in my program, the maintenance piece, the support part's a huge part because yeah, the support you have access to is going to have a huge impact on the results you get. And so that becomes a cornerstone factor for you where you have to say to yourself, I live alone. And I don't have any support. So that's problem oriented thinking. Okay. And all of us start there. That's fine, but you can't stay there. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to go from, I live alone. I have no support problem to solution oriented thinking. What is the solution? How can I be around more people? How can I feel more connected? How can I get more support? And at this time in history, there's a lot of opportunities for that. Real, virtual, um, there's, there's places for that. And so when you start asking solution oriented questions, how can I get more support for my situation? You start coming up with more solutions. The more solutions you come up with, the better your results start getting, okay? So understand that. Can you repeat those? Uh, I don't even know what you wanted me to repeat. I missed it. Uh, someone said, I love you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you reprogram, do you deprogram diet thinking? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's technically what I'm always doing is I'm really deprogramming the dieting thinking, right? Real simple. And so um, it's important that you recognize that, that that's what I always talk about. I'm going to make this video. It's going to be like a YouTube video. It's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be one you can watch re regularly, but it's about the top hypnotic suggestions that diets have put into us. And they've got you like hypnotized literally now hypnosis people don't misunderstand it hypnosis isn't like being in a zombie like trance and doing stuff hypnosis is like if i if i met you in person i held my hand out to shake your hand it's like your hand goes up naturally 
And if you try and stop it, it's like, it feels very uncomfortable. So hypnosis is really referring to your subconscious mind, which this, <laughs> I'm not going to get too deep into this because I could talk about this all day long. Again, I'm a hypnotist. And so again, you know, they say like, uh, when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So everything is hypnosis to me, but it should be. And you should know this because it's not the act of hypnosis that's as important to me as it is the philosophy of hypnosis. I personally find hypnosis to be the most practical and useful philosophy and understanding of your mind that exists in the world. <laughs> because what it says is that you have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Okay. And your conscious mind is logical and rational but it is your subconscious mind that's in control. And it is your subconscious mind is not logical and rational. Your subconscious mind is illogical. It is associative. It just links things together. It's not rational. And so we can go to Pavlov's dogs, right? Remember Pavlov's dogs, he'd show them the food and they would salivate because that was a natural response to seeing food. And while they were having that natural response, he'd ring a bell. And what happened is he associated that ringing bell to the food in the natural response that that triggered. And eventually all he had to do was ring the bell and the dog would salivate. So that became a conditioned response. And so that's how we work as well. You could do the exact same experiment with humans with their smart brains and we would still salivate when we rang the bell after enough conditioning. And so you have to understand now, because this gets to the core of why you haven't been able to lose weight, right? If you were a, if you were like a robot, right? And you could just type in in the morning what you were gonna eat and then you just did it because you were a robot and you just ate that way, you would have no problem losing weight, right? <laughs> It'd be easy because you would just do what you knew you should do. The problem is, as a human, you can type that out in the morning <laughs> and by the afternoon, he's like, ah, screw that. I, I just don't want to do that, right? So the problem is there's some part of you, think about this, because this gets to the, the heart of what I'm talking about, that as much as you want to lose weight and you know what you should do, there is some part of you that is compelling you to do this wrong thing. And you don't know what that part is. You might say, well, I got a rebellious part. Well, I don't know. I, I try to do it, but then some part of me is craving this food. It's your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind doesn't want you to be overweight, but it's just doing what it's been programmed to do. And so if for the last 20 years, you've sat on the sofa at eight o'clock with a bag of chips and ate them while you watch TV to unwind and relax from the day, well, guess what you're going to do tonight at eight o'clock? And guess what happens if, if at eight o'clock you try not to do that, it feels weird. You feel deprived, you feel uncomfortable, right? Because that's what your subconscious mind has been programmed to do. And your conscious mind is no match for it. You know, you've got to understand this. Your subconscious mind operates with much less energy. So think about this. You, first time you learned to tie your shoe was a conscious activity. And you go loop, swoop, bunny ears, all the way. You're thinking about it logically how to do it. But eventually you do it so many times that it goes into your subconscious mind and becomes an automated habit. Literally, there's a part of your brain called the basal ganglia and it goes in there and your basal ganglia is super powerful. Now that habit's in there forever. You could not tie your shoes for 50 years, go in. And now when you tie your shoes, by the way, you don't even think about it. You don't even look, you're just doing on complete autopilot. Let me bring it one step further. Writing, okay? Do you know how to write with your hand? Well, you do, right? You know how to write, but you know how to write subconsciously right? You know how to write consciously. So you understand you could teach someone to write, but you can't write with the other hand. Can you? Can you? No. And now you know how to do it, but you can't do it with your hand. So you see what I'm saying? It's your subconscious mind that knows how to write. And so knowing how to write does not mean you can do it with the other hand. If you wanted to do it with the other hand, you'd have to program it in by practicing with the other hand. You see? So that distinction of understanding conscious knowledge versus subconscious knowledge is crucial when you're going to approach your weight loss. And so again, even in psychology, it makes me nuts because I've studied all the different psychologies and they, they're always defining things. All sub all psychology is really sub is consciously oriented about, we want to understand everything. We want to know everything. Theory is not going to get you results with weight loss. The big problem is that you know all the theory in the world. I'll prove a point. When I was growing up, the guy who taught me more about diets and weight loss than anyone else was a 400 pound comedian who was a family friend. Funny guy, great guy. He did every diet known to man. E every week it was a different diet and he could tell you everything, but he couldn't do any of it. Okay. So this is not a knowledge issue you're having. It's a deeper, you have to transform yourself into a different version of yourself. 
And dieting will never do that. So again, understanding that you have to literally deprogram yourself from diet and thinking. Now it's harder to, than you think because it's so ingrained um, that it's a little bit of a challenge. So, um, oh, great, cool. Yeah, someone says I'm on day three of your program. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah. And so now you get the coaching too. So that's going to bring it further. We just did a coaching, the first coaching lesson of the year here. And um, again, this is what I'm trying to say. So like, so there's a program. And one of the things I teach is the program yourself then technique, right? And it is a simple sounding technique. However, one thing I know from doing this for a while is as simple as it is, people do it wrong. Because guess what? Anytime you do something new, you do it wrong most of the time, which is fine and normal and natural, okay? We're supposed to do things wrong the first time. And then we're supposed to learn from that so that we learn to do it better. That's a normal, natural process of education, evolution, growth. And so this person got on and they said, well, I don't know, the technique's not working. I said, tell me what you're doing. And they told me, and right away, I hear what they're doing wrong. And I correct them. And now they're doing it right. And next week I'll talk to them and they'll do it even better. Do you see? But here's the problem. You think that knowing what you should eat is all you need to lose weight. You think, I know what I need to do. I just got to get myself to do it. No, <laughs> no, you need to learn how to do it. Okay. All the things I just suggested in mindset piece alone, you know, you have no idea. You have no idea how to do it. All you have is willpower. You've got, you're a one trick pony. And again, it's not your fault. This is what the diets have put on you that you need to use willpower and follow the meal plan, willpower to get yourself to exercise. And what happens is your willpower is a finite resource and it starts here in the beginning of the day and it goes down throughout the day. And that's that. Okay. Your willpower, by the way, is a physical process. You should think about metaphorically, think about your willpower like a muscle. It's a prefrontal cortex process and it utilizes glucose in your body to run it. And so by the end of the day, especially if you're dieting, you're not eating. Now it's like your, your willpower goes down naturally. And then your glucose levels are low as well. And so now your hunger goes up and that's where most people find they can't control their eating. Okay. So your willpower alone is not going to cause you to change, especially listen, if you're 50 years old and you've tried 30 diets a hundred times, it's, it, what do you think you're magically going to tap into some hidden well of willpower that you had? You really want to look better this time? Like, like what's going to change what's to be different? It, it's just, it's not enough. And I feel bad because most of my clients are mid forties to sixties, you know? So forties, forties, fifties, sixties are the bulk of my clients. And it's because they can't get themselves to start a diet anymore, right? They've tried so many diets and failed on them that now their brain says, let's cut the shit. I don't even want to go through the process. What? So I can be disappointed again. And so now most people in that range can't even get themselves started. And, and luckily what they don't realize is that's their brain protecting them because they know it doesn't work. Okay. Luckily they kind of find me and I teach them a whole system, right? Notice with dieting, it's all or nothing. It's very binary. You're either doing it or you're not. You're either using your willpower to follow it or you're not. And that's it. Right. So it's like, I had someone on here. I was doing a live yesterday and someone who's in the program is like, I feel like my, my desire to change is dying. Right. Now you all know what that feels like. Right. But usually you're just like, you just slowly watch it die and disappear. There's nothing you can do. Right. So what do I say? I said, well, go look back at your motivation blueprint right now. Let me know how you feel when you read it. And they go, well, I haven't done it yet. Well, go do it. But you said, like, I can point to something. That's the sign of a system. You see, you've been taught to think about your weight loss tactically. So you've got a couple tactics, you know, about how you should eat, maybe how you should exercise. You don't have a full intelligent system. You don't have a systematic process that takes into account your mindset, your lifestyle, and your eating that, that helps you do it. And so when you, when you fall back or something goes wrong, you have no way to kind of diagnose it. You've got your blunt tool of willpower and it doesn't work, right? It works sometimes it doesn't work. And it's funny because I love like talking to dieters that are succeeding. And I will say to them, okay, what's going on? How are you doing this? And, I, and then I'll say, how can you use that when the willpower dismiss? I don't want to hear that. Because when dieters, guess what dieters get? Very superstitious. <laughs> they can't talk about their motivation because they're scared to death that it's going to disappear because they have no control over their motivation. You have no idea what motivates you. You know, again, that's why I have the motivation matrix that I take people through because it's, it's literally my blueprints are 60. It's a 60 page workbook that you go through. Do you know what I mean? Like, think about that. Can you even imagine 60 pages worth of questions and strategies that you would uncover? 
to help you lose your weight again. And I'm not saying I'm not even trying to promote my program. I'm just trying, I'm trying to point out that I, I the, my main message, is I don't want you to blame yourself. It's not your fault. You have been lied to and manipulated by the food companies and the diets, which are the same thing. And you have a very inadequate strategy, but the problem is you think it's enough. And so you're caught up in that illusion. It's literally hypnosis. So I love when people say, well, I, you know, I can't be hypnotized. Yes, you can. We all can be, and we all are. We all live our lives subconsciously. We're on autopilot most of the time. Okay. And so the real secret is learning how to influence your subconscious mind because that's what's running all of your behaviors. It's running how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. And until you know how to influence your subconscious mind, weight loss is always going to be a struggle because the only tool you have is your conscious willpower, which is finite and a tiny little muscle compared to the, the super muscle of your subconscious mind. Right. Imagine if you had to remind yourself to breathe all day, right? we'd all be dead. You know what I mean? Our mind's not set up to be mindful all the time. And that's what you're expecting on a diet. You're expecting yourself to be mindful, able to make the right choice all day long. And you're not built that way. Your brain's not designed that way. You're built to operate on autopilot, to do what you did. You're the number one organizing principle of your brain is to conserve energy. Okay. So a diet is the opposite of that, right? You have to think, and, and, and not only that, but the diet never even gets easier. It's just constant effort. It's constant willpower. It's an endurance test. How long can you keep it up? You know, it never gets easier. That's why I say to you, right? When I tell you the goal for you should not be to lose weight, because that's not your goal anyways. Your real goal is to return to your goal weight and then live there for the rest of your life. I'm not done on near autopilot. That's got to be part of it because me, I don't want to be thinking about food and calories and my weight all day long. I just, and I don't, <laughs> I just live my life. My weight's exactly where I want it to be because I live a structured existence that I know my weight's going to be right where I want it to be. Okay. I'm not hungry all day, fighting off hunger all day. I eat strategically. So I'm not that hungry. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's another diet bullshitter is that you need to be really hungry in order to lose weight. No, you don't. You need to be really hungry. Then you're going to overeat at some point because you can only deal with that for so long. Okay. So again, you need to learn, eat, eat, eat strategically so that you're not starving so that you can make better food choices. So that's awesome. Uh, Catherine, that's great. Um, so get on those live calls too. Okay. We just did it today. And even if you can't make it, you can write questions in, but that's awesome. Keep it going. Um, so let's see if there's any other questions. Thanks for sharing all your knowledge. You're amazing. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad to be sharing this stuff. Like I said, this is, uh, I'm really able to kind of live my mission now. It, it's like, I've been able to restructure my whole business so that I have time. Um, I've kind of figured this all out. Cause again, my mission is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. This is life or death for me. I want as many parents to be there for their kids as long as possible, to be there for your partners, to be there for your parents. Whoever's most important in your life, I want you to be there and I want you to be there fully present, being the best version of you. That's the goal. Okay. Um, do you have any tips for adults with ADHD in particular? I feel like it's been adding extra struggle. Yeah, sure. That that's again, we all got our challenges. And so, um, again, I'm not an ADHD expert, you know, in, in any means of the way, but I will tell you, cause I do know a lot of ADHD people that are entrepreneurs and I love that because they reframe the ADHD as a positive. And so that would be my, I, I don't have time to go into all the details of it. I, I'll do this at some point. Cause I, that's a great question. But what I would suggest is that you look at your challenges and ask the question, how can I use this in a positive way? So one thing may be, and again, I don't know your particular you know, flavor of ADHD and how it's affecting you, but if you get distracted easily, that puts you in a good position in terms of how to deal with cravings. Because scientifically, they've studied this, the most effective strategy to deal with unhealthy cravings is not to say, no, I can't have it. It's not to say, no, I'm on a diet and I want to lose weight. It's to say, I'll have it later. And what that does is we don't cut it off psychologically. And so we don't cut the dopamine off. And so as long as we hold it out in front of ourselves somewhere, our brain says, okay, I'm okay with that. As long as we have it later, okay, right? And so it's when we say, I can't have that ever again, diet mentality, that all of a sudden we start craving it obsessively, all right? So if you have uh, ADHD, it might be a helpful strategy for you to start saying when you have a craving to say, I'll have it later. I can have it, but I'm going to, I'm going to wait a little bit. I'll have it later. And then with, with the brain, like you have, and again, I don't know the specifics of your situation. So I'm just giving you this as an example. So if this doesn't work for you, just understand the, the theory of what I'm saying here. But what you want to do is you want to, um, utilize your strengths, you know, the ADHD, how can I use that? And so if you say, well, I'll have it later. 
well, there's a good chance with your active brain that you'll be on to the next thing by then, you know, and that might help you, you know, avoid that. Um, but again, so the specifics may not apply to you, but understand the deeper part of what I'm talking about here is that you become solution oriented thinking, right? So you start looking at the problems as a fine place to start, but then force yourself to say, what is the solution I want? How can I use the problem to get to the solution that I want to do? Um, someone says, what do you think about these new medications? Is it ultimately failure in the end? Um, yeah, again, I answered this before because I get this asked a lot and I, I feel like it's similar to even like the diet surgeries or the weight loss surgeries. Um, that I, I think there's a place for them. I really do. But I would like it to be put with the, the hypnotist, right? Because I was joking that the hypnotist is the solution of last resort. No one starts their weight loss journey with a hypnotist usually. Um, they, they fail a bunch of times and then they get to the hypnotist. And so I say this as someone who I've worked with a number of people um, that wanted to get weight loss surgeries. And uh, they said, well, I got to lose a certain amount of weight first before I get to surgery. So I, I need to do your program. And I always say, well, geez, can you, can you just promise me that if you do lose the weight that you'll reconsider, right? Maybe you could get to your goal all the way with here. So I think the same thing with medicine, because you probably don't know how much is, because my, my approach to weight loss is not just cutting calories. I, I think that's obviously you need to create a caloric deficit. That's the number one thing you need to do to, to get your weight down. But the next piece that's super important is lifestyle. And this is where I think the medication conversation comes in, the menopause conversation, um, the weight loss surgery conversation, is that until you really clean up your lifestyle, you're never going to know. And then obviously your mindset as well. But until you transform your mindset and your lifestyle and, and change your eating for a while, you're never going to know how much of it was those things and how much of it was your actual genetics, physical situation. You know, so for me, I would rather really commit to the mindset, lifestyle and eating piece for a while, a year at least, than see where I'm at. And then if I didn't lose any weight at all, then I would absolutely consider medications, you know, but I think the danger there is that, you know, we use the medications as a shortcut, you know, and, and again, the, the weight loss surgery is a lot of this, you know, I just read that, um, the gastric bypass that a quarter of people that get that end up becoming addicted to alcohol you know, because the rerouting of it causes the alcohol to be absorbed even quicker. Um, but then more importantly is that a lot of times you know, it's getting better with the weight loss surgeries, but a big part of the weight loss surgeries before was that there was very little therapy with it, you know? And so you, yes, you're physically changing something, but the same mental problems that caused the issue in the first place are still there, never dealt with, you know? So again, that mindset piece is always a core component that needs to be dealt with. And so I'd rather deal with those first and then you know, decide if I want to use the medication. So that, that's kind of my thought on that. Um, someone says, I'm so excited about the new sleep hypnosis. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Again, I, I mean, again, for any of you that struggle with sleep, I want to remind you that sleeping is a skill. Okay. And you can get better at it. All right. Um, someone says I'm um, a minus 24 pounds in 13 weeks. Wow. Good for you. Very, very successful. That's great. That's great. Someone says this makes total sense. Yeah, great. I'm glad. That's like the number one comment I love hearing is that uh, it just makes sense, you know, because again, I, I like teaching you new things and I, I can do that, but I more want to point out things that you can just be like, uh, like, I love like, like people have been trying to lose weight for 40 years, right? Obsessive and smart people, right? So my clients are very smart, successful people typically. And so it's like, it's like they're, they're so successful in like all the areas of their lives, and then they struggle with this area. And it's so frustrating to them. And the big challenge is that they've got the qualities and the skill sets to it to achieve it, but they don't know how to map them over to this area. And it's literally hypnosis that keeps them not using those skill sets in this area. But, but my favorite thing is when smart, successful people say, geez, I've been trying to lose weight for 30 years and everything you're saying is just blowing my mind. That's what I like. I like pointing out because that's the nature of hypnosis is that there can be obvious things right in front of you, but you don't see them as that. You're almost, you're almost mentally blind to them. And that's how you've all become with, with the diets. I was too, and I still fight it, but the dieting has you all twisted up in your head, literally hypnotized, you know, to not see the real solutions. And you keep relying on the diet philosophies and um, beliefs and, and things like that. So I love hearing that this makes total sense. Um, I'm glad this is helping you. Um, yeah. How do I lose weight quickly? Yeah. Okay. So, so that question, you know, if you've been listening to this for a little bit, you probably know where I'm going with this, but, um, I, I hate that question simply because that's a diet oriented question. It's like, do you want to lose weight quickly or do you want to, I, I have a thing like, I want do you want to lose the weight as soon as possible or for as long as possible? Because it's usually two different strategies to achieve each one of those. And it's very difficult to do both, you know? And so I know when I say, well, Again, can you lose weight quickly? Yeah, sure. But how do you lose weight quickly? 
It's usually by cutting a substantial amount of calories out by doing something extreme. The more extreme thing you do, the less sustainable it's probably going to be. You know, so the more obsessed you are with losing weight quickly, probably the more unsuccessful you're going to be, you know, not to be a jerk. Um, so when I hear that question, I tend to give people the patience speech, you know, which basically just, you got to develop patience with this process because do you want to lose weight quickly or do you want to lose it for good? You know? And so, and not only that, but like, and again, this is a diet hypnotic suggestion that you're really fixated on losing weight quickly. And metaphorically, what that means is it's like you're approaching your weight loss like it's a sprint, when in reality, it's a never ending marathon. And how you approach those two things is going to dictate what you do and pretty much how the results you get. Because if you think of this as a sprint, if you're going to run a sprint and you trip, you've lost the sprint, right? There's no room for error when you sprint, right? And if you approach your weight loss like that, that's how it feels. Doesn't it feel like that? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like that's why you're all or nothing? Like, it's fine as long as you're 100% perfect, but the second you make a mistake, it feels like, ah, oh, shit, I blew it, right? Because subconsciously you're thinking as like a sprint, but there's no room for error, you know? That's why you need to think of it as like a marathon, a never ending marathon. Because how long do you want to be at your goal weight for? Three months, six months, a year, or the rest of your life, right? So if that's your goal, then you've got to, you've got to change the way you're thinking about this, right? Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to say, how do you lose weight quickly? You, you starve yourself. That's what I'd suggest. <laughs> I had a baby in May and just can't lose 20. Um, okay. So what I always say to people where there's hormonal issues, physical issues, right? And so menopause, pregnancy, hormonal um, challenges, I really say dig into the lifestyle piece because if you can dig into reducing calories typically is helpful, but the lifestyle piece, and specifically when I say lifestyle, what I'm referring to is, is the eight habits I talk about. Sleeping, hydration, proper hydration levels, relaxation, breathing, nourishment, movement, meditation, and gratitude. And if you can weave those into your life, they transform you in a number of ways, okay? And so a lot of times they will resolve, and I don't, I'm not making claims here, but a lot of times you don't know if it's the lifestyle issue or if it's the issue that the lifestyle issue is created, right? So a lot of times the hormonal stuff is a symptom of the lifestyle issue, you know, and you won't know that until you dedicate yourself to a healthier lifestyle. And guess what? Even if it doesn't fix the hormonal issues, all those lifestyle things I just mentioned drastically increase the quality of your life. <laughs> they make you feel happier, more energized. You feel more peace at yourself. You feel more um, just excited to be alive typically, you know, so, um, and then you can really get a better sense of, you know, what's, what's the physical part where I'm at and what's not. Now, by the way, I say this to you, um, I've got elevated cholesterol, genetically high cholesterol. I say this to you as a practical vegan for, for of, of almost 30 years. I've been almost a practical vegan here. Um, I do eat fish, but I eat very little dairy, no meat. And so I've elevated, elevated cholesterol, right? How, how can it happen? But even knowing that, I said, well, what can I do to change it? And so I began moving more. I started walking 10,000 steps a day, you know, and I've been working this for a while. And so I just could never get it down to a level I felt comfortable with. So I started taking statins. So again, I am not against, um, you know, medicines and things like that. I think there's a time and a place, but what I, I can comfortably do those now knowing that I did everything in my lifestyle. And then I recently found that if I start doing more weight training, more physical resistance training, that might help with the cholesterol. And so I've started integrating that. And then I'll, I'll redo it. But again, I want to look at the lifestyle piece first and then um, make a decision on where I want to go from there. So same with the baby weight in May. Listen, a baby in May, first of all, um, I, if I were you, I would probably change my goal. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this as a dad who, when I had my kid 10 years ago, my, my second one, he was not, he was almost colicky, right? And so he wasn't a good sleeper and he made me tired. I don't blame him, but he was a pain in the ass. This kid, I love this guy more, more than any guy in the world. I love him. Um, but he was, a, he was a tough, challenging kid. And so for three, four years there, I remember, because right around the time I turned 40, and I remember turning four, I was like, holy shit, I feel horrible. <laughs> it was like, then it made me look back. I was like, oh my God, well, I've had this, this boy in my life who has really, I hadn't got a good night's sleep in like two, three years at that point. You see? So what I'm saying to you is you've just had a baby. I just talked about the lifestyle piece. It's one of the big ones is the, the sleeping one. So when I had my kid, I put 25 pounds on. Now there was other stresses too. We moved into a house and I redid the whole thing. And I, there, was, there was a lot of stresses and things going on. 
And so sometimes life hits us in the gut, you know what I mean? And, and so if you just had a baby in May, um, you just haven't recovered. I mean, you're still not sleeping, right? You're still, you know what I mean? You're still in the thick of it. My friend had the best explanation to having a baby. They're like having a baby. It's like being in a submarine and then you deep dive for like months at a time. <laughs> and then you come up for air and breathe for a second. Then you go back down. And so having a kid is, is a real child is a real intense thing. Okay. So what I'd suggest to you is give yourself a little bit of grace and recognize that your sleeping is being dramatically impacted. And that's having all sorts of residual systematic holistic effects on you. And so it may not be a bad time to put the weight off to the side a little bit and really focus in on your lifestyle and your health, getting as much sleep as possible whenever you can, um, hydration, relaxing, take, dedicate five minutes a day to just shut the world out, shut that kid out for a second and just decompress in a genuine way. Do some breathing, relax, quiet your mind, okay? Um, and then nourish yourself. Get some good quality nourishment in. Focus on that. And then, you know, once you get yourself back to a more normal level of energy, mentality, emotions, you know, then start focusing on the weight loss. So I know that's probably not the answer you want to hear, but that's my genuine suggestion that I would make to you. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So you just asked for advice for moms with kids under one. Yeah, I'd put the weight off to the side for a little bit. You know, that would be my my big one. Don't add on to the stress of that or worry about the weight, okay? Um, take care of yourself, self-care, right? Make that priority number one. And that'll make this time better. And um, it'll set you up for success for when you're ready to deal with the weight part, okay? So that would be my suggestion. And I make that to everyone. And I think it's important advice. Um, any advice for new moms? Yep, I just did that one. So great. I hope that helps you out too, by the way. I want to lose it for good, but it's so hard. Yeah, I mean, just to be honest, I mean, and again, you don't want to hear this. This isn't a phrase you want to hear necessarily. But if you start fixating on weight mastery, okay? So for example, right? So when I, um, even right now, right? So it's the new year and I want to get myself back on track. But my clients, what we're talking about is re-entry. Not just like January 1st, just be perfect all of a sudden. Re-entry means let's recover from the last six weeks. You're probably depleted, right? You've been eating like shit. You're tired. You've been stressing, traveling, hosting, dealing with family and people. Um, you're depleted and exhausted. And so now you think you're just going to jump into some really stressful thing like dieting and changing everything all at once. You're probably not. And so here I am to give you another option. And it works. <laughs> Is that you stop thinking about the weight loss for a couple of weeks and you start focusing on recovery. Get yourself back to a good level, physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, where you're feeling good again and give yourself a couple of weeks. And then when you feel better, then start focusing more on the food and the weight loss piece of it. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, and, and, and then you're willing to do that again. The thing, the reason you resist that again, is that um, dieting mentality, that subconsciousness of thinking about quick results and anything that's slow. It's like you, you subconsciously shut off from it. Because if it's not fast results, you don't want to do it. Now, by the way, there's some psychological key, key parts to that, okay? Our brain, there's a lot of cognitive biases. If you don't know what that is, you should look them up because they, they literally let you know why you're struggling with what you're struggling with. And so we have a cognitive bias. We discount the future. And so if it's not happening now, it's not as valuable to us. And so fast weight loss seems valuable to us. Long-term weight loss seems less valuable. Right. So you've got to recognize this and strategize with this. That's part of a real weight loss strategy. Okay. So anyways, so, so I'm going to drop it off here, but, but again, what I will say is if you're interested in what I'm saying, let's take this to another level. Cause I love doing these talks, but I'm kind of all a bing bong all over the place based on what people write. If you want kind of a straight shot of, um, you know, of strategy, go watch the training I put up. It's, a, it's in the description, my, my bio, Go look at that. It's the three steps to mastering weight. Go click on that. Put your name and email in there and go watch the half hour video. It'll change the way you think about weight, your weight forever. It, it'll transform it more than even this because it's a complete walkthrough. All right. Um, and, and I'd suggest you do that. You know, it's going to help you out a lot. Someone said I had to eat paleo because of food allergies. I'm on day five and everything was easy until today. <laughs> Ugh, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but thank you for saying that. Okay. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed the training. But thank you for saying that because that's what I want you to become aware of. When you go, every time you've tried to lose weight, you have gone into a trance. Trances is when we're not logically thinking. Trances, hypno hypnosis is bypassing the critical faculty. It's when you go into automated mode. And when you go into diet, you're going to automated mode driven by extreme emotion. And you can get through 
a couple days, a couple weeks typically. And that's what, exactly what this person said. I got food allergies on my day five of cutting all of the gluten and all of the, the carbs out. And it was easy for four days. And now I'm on day five. That's why I always say, here's another litmus test. When you hear someone say, oh, I've been doing X diet and I've lo- I, it's been amazing. I've lost 10 pounds. You know, every time in my mind, the next question I say is, talk to me in six months. Because where are you going to be in six months? Because every diet is set up for fast results, not long-term results. I don't even know a plan that's set up for long-term results. I can't. That's why I joke around. I put that on my bio because I think it's funny. But I I said, um, I'm like America's weight mastery coach, you know? And I say like, my program is the number one weight mastery program. Now, I'm joking a little bit because there are no weight mastery programs. (laughs) No one's teaching you how to master your weight. They're teaching you how to lose some weight quickly because- now, again, I don't even blame people to try and come up with weight loss things that genuinely want to help people because people now just want fast results. It's like, if you're not going to give me fast results, I'm not even interested. I'm not going to look at your program. I want fast results, you know? And so again, that's what, again, another reason why I really work almost exclusively with people in their forties, fifties, sixties, you know, and seventies is because you're, you're more mature and you under, you see the bigger picture. You, you have enough experience now to know that losing a little bit of weight is not the goal you want. There's, there's almost nothing worse than losing the weight and putting it back on. You know, and so I get the people that have, have again, they, they've finally figured out that's not working for me. I need something else. And that, that's where I come in. OK. And so, again, the first steps you can take is go watch that training. Go check it out, you know, because um, what I try to tell you, I, I guess I put it this way. It's kind of like the, the saying that, that I think my approach to weight loss is simple, but not easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's definitely work. I mean, there's discipline. There, there's, you know, investment of time, energy and money, no doubt. Um, but it's a, it's a systematic plan. I like to think of it. It's like college, right? College is not easy, but it's simple in the sense that it's a laid out plan. You, you take this course da, 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 and then you end up with a degree where you understand this subject in a lot of different ways. And that's what I think of my weight program. My weight mastery program is that it breaks all this down into details that you don't think about in currently. You know, right now you have no detail about it. You've got willpower, force myself to eat better, force myself to exercise. Let's see how long I can keep it going. And then again, this person, like you said, you get to day five and everything was easy until today. And then it's like, well, oh shit, well, what do I do now? And now you start getting nervous and anxious. Well, I'm going to try. I hope tomorrow I can stick with it. And that's just the beginning of the end, you, you know? And then that's the point you always find yourself and you have no solution at that point. And, but you keep repeating it. You don't realize you're repeating it because you're in hypnosis when you do it, because it's all triggered by a very negative emotion of stepping on the scale, seeing a picture of yourself, seeing a reflection of yourself. The clothes don't fit. You go into an unpleasant, painful trance and you say, I don't care what I need to do. I just need to do something. And now you're in a trance. You're not using your mind. And then you get into it and start doing it for a little while. And the trance wears off and you say, I, I can't do this anymore. And then you stop and then you go right back to where you were. And then you wait till the next painful trance starts again. Sound familiar? Right. So you need to do something different. Um, someone says, how to fall asleep faster. Uh, falling asleep is a skill. And the, and the main thing about falling asleep faster is twofold. Yes. You need to relax your body. You need to get good at relaxing your body systematically. That's the first thing. And the second thing is you need to be able to quiet and relax your mind. Okay. And so and there's a lot more to it again. I'm kind of giving you the 10,000 foot view, but that's the two beginnings of it. And I got some sessions, go check them out. <clears throat> On YouTube, I got like hour long sessions that, that'll guide you to sleep, four hour long ones, you know, that'll help you sleep through the night. Um, and on TikTok, I have some uh, short, short ones, just give you some strategies, but it's a skill. Please understand that sleeping is a skill and you can get better at it. And that's probably a life skill that will probably benefit you more than almost anything else. All right. So, um, all right. Hope that helps you out. All right, everyone. Have a great day. I really enjoyed this. Uh, we will talk again soon. I'm here all the time. So, I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day, everyone.